Something on your mind, darling? I would, didn't I? Sure thing.
Like to take a look at what I've been working on? By all means. I'm afraid that exploring this island would only consume precious time that I need for my work. I shall be remaining here. Something on your mind, darling? Darling. Why, I can't remember the last time someone showed me such kindness. <laughs> Maybe even never. When it matters most, I will stand alongside you. I promise. After all, I am soon to be a free woman. I can choose to follow whomever I wish now.
something on your mind, darling? Sniveling little beast. How dare you? How dare you reject us? How many times did I have to tell you? I am eternal. Perhaps I should thank you. If not for your cruelty, I would not have met him. If not for your crimes, I would never have been reunited with my people. But now, now I am whole. And soon, soon, you will be torn to pieces. You vile s- How dare you reject us? How many t Perhaps I- If not for- But now- And soon- Much to your surprise, you encounter Ifan Ben Medst once more. But wasn't he dead? Alive. I am far from alive. I am sworn to the Covenant. And you too will be far from alive after I face you in the arena of the One. He smirks, and something awful glitters in the void behind his eyes. Something you never saw there before. Something you hope never to see again. Godwoken, are your studies complete? All Godwoken have completed their studies. I take you now to the Arena of the One. The Wellspring awaits the victor. There you may fall. Or you may rise.
so it begins. The first Godwoken to enter the wellspring of ascension becomes divine. May the new divine be worthy. For the rest, may he have mercy on your soul. To the wellspring of ascension, begin. So this is it, the arena of the one. I'll stand to my word, sorcerer. God will Whatever happens here, I'll fight at your side.
find them. It's all those two. So good of you to come, God Woken. You know, you are many things, but above all, you are reliable. Reliable to the point of being predictable. You came to the Wellspring. I followed. The Lady Vengeance is, after all, my ship. And now here we all are. It is time, mistress. She gives you a long and steady look, as if it is the last time you shall see each other for the rest of eternity. Then she dips her chin in acknowledgement. You are almost her equal. Yes, Vredeman. It is time. What are you doing here, traitor? Does your scheming never end? I believed you, Dallas, when you told me I was chosen. But all this time, you were lying. You were trying to prevent my ascension. So disappointing. But your games end here. It is time for me to claim my birthright. The Godwoken shall ascend. You were right, mistress. He is an imbecile. Not an imbecile. Just misguided. Wiser ones than him were lured by the promise of all that power. And it brought them to nothing but ruin. It brought me ruin. Anyway, it all ends now. You see, Alexander, divinity isn't the solution to the world's ills. Divinity is the problem. I am here to fix that. And now, finally! She raises the Aetiran. Like a divining rod to water, it seeks the wellspring and finds it. The device hums to life. My purpose transcends such concepts. Alexander was but a tool. We are done, mistress. Yes, Breederman, we are done. And so too, Godwoken, are you. Soon you shall be little more than relics of a bygone time, and this place shall be your tomb. Goodbye. It might be wise to look for a way out of here. Really? You think so? If I didn't know our shield had everything under control, I'd think we were in big trouble. The ritual has failed. The structure lies in ruins, but you have at least survived. You should feel relief, disappointment, confusion, anything but the rage that wells up from deep within you. The rage grows, burning hotter than the volcano itself, tearing at you, seeking to overpower your senses. The red mist wants to descend. The red mist feels like it does not belong to you. The red mist feels alive. And it wants you. 
A familiar figure materializes before you. A copy of yourself, enraged. Your own face glowers at you in hateful fury. It opens its mouth. And your furious god begins to speak. I called a hero from the chaff. I called him here to me. I called a hero from below, and he shall set us free. Hear and heed my call, my love. Your hand is mine to hold. Hear and heed my call, my love. I've secrets to unfold. You are mine, you are my own. Your life belongs to me. You are mine, you are my own. My champion to be. She gives you a look of the deepest, darkest contempt. My mistake. I saved you. I guided you. I blessed you. I built you into what you are. I made you. I asked much of you, but I gave you everything you needed to reach your goal. And yet, you failed me. Now I must do the job for which you were made. Now I must wield what's left of my power and become the one god, savior of the kin and lord of Rivalon. Give me your body and soul, now before the others come. There can be only one now. Give yourself to me. You never learn your lesson, do you? I gave you life. Now I take it away.
The Titan lies in pieces before you. The god controlling it is dead by your hand. Lava roils as earthquakes rumble around you. Shockwaves of sound pierce the air, the growl of shifting ground. Suddenly, a voice echoes in your mind. It's Malady. Where the hell are you, she calls. Ah, find my beacon. We need to get out of here now. Her voice crackles and dissipates in your mind. When I said never again, I really meant once or twice more. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The Wall of Echoes once more. Our home away from home. Close indeed. You almost became a god, and instead you're still... you. At least you managed to murder one of the seven. Quite the spectacle. I've never seen anything so... <clears throat> Let's talk about this later. I need to rest. We've still one big jump to go, but... It'll have to wait. She casts her gaze around, taking in the streaming bluish ether. She breathes a deep, ragged breath. At least... It's quite... Quite beautiful here, isn't it? I'm going to take a rest, sort myself out. I suggest you do the same. Speak to the ship if you need me. She'll know where to find me. This may be your last bit of respite before the storm blows in again, Godwoken. Enjoy it. You deserve that much. He runs his paws over the cat's skeleton with long, methodical strokes. Sometimes his fingers curl, as if he's forgotten that Crocus's fur is long gone. Shh, don't cry. We got out. We made it. We are safe. They can't get us here. The knights will never hurt us again, Quercus. I promise.
Quercus, after all the shield has done, do you think it's time? Yes. Yes, I think so too. The story belongs to us both, and by now the shield deserves to know the truth. The squirrel looks up and meets your eyes for the first time. Small, shining beads take you in. We have traveled some time together, S.H.I.E.L.D. There were times when I... when I very nearly lost heart. My research, so much of it, has led to naught. At times, I fear I am no closer to stopping the acorn than when I started. But you have been relentless when I felt I might falter. You sallied forward. You, you and the Quercus have given me strength when mine waned. You deserve to know the truth. The reason I know so much about the Knights of Dre, the reason I'm the one who needs to stop them, well, I was one of their order once. I was an acolyte of the Great Acorn. I saw dwarves tear down my forest, turning my home into weapons of war. I saw humans launching great orbs of fire into the homes of my friends. I saw lizards shackling the citizens of the land with harnesses and whips. The Great Acorn would stop you all for good. And what do you call the destruction of an entire forest and all its inhabitants? They call it progress. We call it genocide. The same as you. You reap what you sow. Isn't that right? At least, that's what I thought then. I believed in the cause of the Great Eagle. I believed the Knights of Dre were righteous in their quest. But they proved themselves zealots, heartless. He runs his paws along Quercus's bony head and scritches the space behind his ear. Quercus rattles a dry, contented purr. Quercus was once a beautiful, burnished orange, long of hair, green of eye. So soft of tread, he could stalk through a thicket of dry thorns without disturbing a single one. That was before. Before the Knights of Dre decided... Well, they decreed. They... They executed him. Squirrels alone shall reap the great acorn's blessings, they said. It's unnatural to associate with other species, they said. So they killed him. My friend, it was then I knew that they'd gone too far. It was then that I realized what I had been party to. It took every last bit of magic I had gathered to bring him back. Then we ran. I just wanted to find a safe den where we could hide together, but... The squirrel sits quietly for a moment, running his hand down the cat's spine. Quercus arches his back and flexes his claws. But Quercus said we could do more. He said we should push on. The cat leans into your palm, rubbing against you, and only a quick act of acrobatics stops Solora from being knocked off. The squirrel throws his hands up in indignity, but you can see a quiet smile spreading underneath his whiskers. What a bevy of misfits we are! Though I suppose it is best to fit badly in a world gone mad. Fear not, shield. I will discover how to stop the Great Acorn. I will protect the creatures of this land, all of them, from the knights. 
With Quercus at my side, with you at my side, I know I will not fail. The day was lost, and no one won. Divinity is still up for grabs. Will you be the one to grab it? I do so wonder. Not but the demon I'm hunting. I did. The day was lost, and no one won. Divinity is still up for grabs. Will you be the one to grab it? I do so wonder. Gareth's head is steady, but his face is pale and his eyes are lost. We still have a mission, Godwoken. You must ascend. I will see it through. After all that's just happened, life, every flawed morsel of it, seems more precious to you than ever. You look around at those who have accompanied you so far. In each one, something unique shines through. Divinity has eluded you so far, but life, life beats strong within you, here and now. Who knows what lies ahead for you, for your companions? Your quest failed. The void is growing stronger, and the hall is dark. You feel the need for some affection. Perhaps they feel it too. She pulls you close and kisses you like you've never been kissed before. That's a yes. Come, let's find ourselves a quiet spot, shall we? As you move to go below decks, the live wood creaks and groans. The steps you thought you knew lead you to a part of the ship you've never seen before. A newly carved nook that smells of resin and wood chips. Touching the wall beneath your fingers, the live wood hums at your touch. You understand that the Lady Vengeance has carved this space for you, in gratitude for your help. You enter, and feel the presence of the ship recede, offering you the total privacy of a moment alone with your companion. The first moment you have been truly alone together. No sooner have you entered the room than Sibyl shoves you onto the bed and starts tearing at your clothes. I want you naked. Now. She looks on as you remove your garb, and it's like you can feel her gaze, an eager flame that travels up and down your naked body. Good boy. She takes one of your hands and leads it to her lips, gently brushing them with your fingertips. Remember how when we first met I licked your arm? Think now of what will happen when I lick you all over. All those memories shrouded in flesh. No more secrets. I will know you like I know my own heart. She lowers your hand and places it between her breasts. You can feel the beat of her heart, the dulcet ancient rhythm. Let me come to know you. She kisses you gently, then, as your mouths open, a dalliance of tongues. Mmm, the sweet taste of remembrance. The titillation that is one's first kiss. How young you were. Tell me, how was it? <laughs> so I gather, but practice makes perfect, as we've just proven. I think it's time for another taste. She kisses your neck, your chest, twirls her tongue around your nipples. Ah. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. Another sensation altogether. But... You're... Afraid. Tell me why. I understand. 
But there is so much more to me than my needle. Forget the scar. Forget the names on my skin. And forget the instrument with which I kill. You will get to know the real me. All of me. I am Sibyl, and I'm here with you. That's right, my darling. I'm here with you. Now do you realize you've no reason to fear me? That I could never hurt you? I love you. I want you. Her kisses go lower still, your belly and below. Her tongue is all along your length. Just a tease. Slowly she moves back up, her body close to you, her lips against your ear. Just one question left. The one question as yet unanswered in your flesh. Do you love me too? And I believe you, for you told me the truth before. With a few easy movements, Sibyl slips out of her clothes and straddles you in all her naked glory. Two heats hot against one another. Ah, oh, isn't it wonderful to be in love? Isn't it magical to make love? Her lips land on yours once more as she guides you inside her, and slowly, ever so slowly, gallops you into oblivion. The night was long, but you didn't sleep a wink. You lie in one another's arms, basking in euphoric exhaustion. <sighs> Ready for round five? <laughs> Don't be silly. As Sibyl's hands trapes their way down, a sound emanates in the distance. Oh, that was Lady Vengeance. She's calling us back. How she spoils our sport. You both rise from the bed and get dressed. When you're ready to leave, Sibyl takes your hands in hers. You know me now, don't you? The real me. You're not afraid anymore, are you? And I love you. One more kiss. Then you leave, your arms around each other's waist. Let's get this divinity thing over with, shall we? This is so much more fun. Are you ready to continue the journey? One word and the Lady Vengeance will take us back to our world. You okay, Chief? She says nothing for a moment, but chews her lip, deep in thought. To be honest, so did I. When we first arrived on the island, I could barely keep a lid on it. But when we fought the gods, it suddenly grew quiet. I think it's waiting, biding its time. For what, I'm not totally sure, but it's eager. I wish I didn't have to say that. It's funny, isn't it? From here, none of it seems real. Dallas, the gods, I mean, <laughs> we killed a god! What can I say? I'm a popular girl. Hadn't even felt him hanging around in there. Well, we made short work of him. <laughs> you want to know the truth? I don't think it means anything at all. I think it means, if you live a life, things will happen. Crazy things, painful things, fantastic things. You can't pick which ones you'll get. All you can do is live them. She looks out into the swirling blue and green of the hall and sighs. <sighs> Let's rest up. Whatever comes next, I want to be ready for it. Hey up. I hear we're about ready to move out. Reckon you'll need to talk with the shiphead to summon Malady and let her know we're ready. Not 
not right now. Come back later. Not many things I can fetch around here, but who cares, eh? Look at this place! I'm glad I didn't step ashore on that island with you, sorcerer. That place is a pyre. The Order. My comrades, I don't regret leaving with Almira, but I did swear an oath. I hear Bishop Alexander made it to the island with some followers. What came of him? <sighs> no wonder the Order has fallen so low, when its leadership is populated by cutthroats and traitors. I made the right decision to flee with Almira. I thought you'd forgotten about me, darling. How goes your little endeavor? Almira gives you a devilish grin and traces her finger along your forearm. I had a feeling you'd be one to watch, my dear. I'm glad to hear my faith wasn't misplaced. All this commotion hasn't made it any easier for me to restore Anathema. The fewer distractions, the better. My efforts continue. I must admit it's quite an intricate piece to work with, even for... Fane is busy scribbling in his ephemeral notebook. If Anne's spirit stares at you, seemingly through you, there is neither affection nor blame in his expression. He gives no sign of seeing you. If Anne's eyes flicker rapidly from side to side, as if trying to take in an expansive sight, he whispers, Gleku Duma, Gleku Duma, over and over, and suddenly you seem to hear the chattering of thousands of elven voices in the distance. Then, before your eyes, his spirit dissolves into the sound, his own voice joining the cacophony that you can hear. That you could hear, for now, no sound remains. All is calm. Fane is busy scribbling. 